Hey, as we approach the beginning of a new school year, yes, it's right around the corner, the province has announced its plan to catch up. This is basically a blueprint to help students recoup time that was lost in the classroom because of the pandemic. But there are a lot of questions between what happens between now and the beginning of that school year. So hopefully with some of these answers, joining me live now is Ontario's Education Minister Stephen Lecce. Good morning to you, Minister. Good morning. Good to be back. Uh, good to have you here. Um, briefly, I want to go over the plan in that um, there are several dollars invested in tutoring, in mental health. Um, and on paper, this is phenomenal thing. These are phenomenal things that need to be done. I think we can all agree. But the big sure. elephant in the room being that negotiations are underway with five education unions right now. There are no deals at this point. So let's begin here. Where do negotiations stand? Sure. Well, the intent of yesterday's announcement was to signal clearly to the people of Ontario that we're going to get kids back to class at, in a normal full-time experience with all extracurricular sports clubs, all the elements that are important to a child's mental and physical health. The labor negotiations are important. They provide, uh, I think, an opportunity for us to get stability for educators, for students, and for families. Uh, and it's why we've been sitting with all negotiators. We've been sitting down at the table with all our negotiations with every union partner to land a deal. So we're net right now actively negotiating. Some of the unions have made dates available to the government over the coming weeks and months. Some of them have indicated they'll be available in September. We want to hammer out a deal because kids deserve stability and they've got to be in class. There is no tolerance for disruption. Families deserve that predictability. And so I've done it before. We've landed deals with our labor partners. We hope to do so quickly. So we can just get these kids back and they can all have a sense of relief that they can focus on learning and being kids with their friends in front of their teachers and not have to deal with this, uh, these challenges every couple of years in Ontario. I think everyone would like what, you know, a normal school year, but there are a number of, of hurdles in play here. Um, it would be in an ideal world to have these voluntary deals. But as you were asked yesterday, and I will ask you again, if your government is looking to create legislation to make teachers and education workers essential. Can you answer that? We are focused on getting a deal, Melanie. Uh, I, my mandate from the Premier of Ontario is to land a deal that is fair to the workers and good for kids that keeps them in school, that ensures education quality, and that we continue to hire educators based on their merit, not on seniority. We've indicated clearly our intention. We've done it before. We can do it again. And that is what I intend to implement and achieve in this negotiation. Before we get to the negotiation, of course, kids are going to return to school. They're going to be in class. And we're setting out expectations for how we can improve them. Because in these negotiations, often kids sometimes could be lost. And I want families to, understand, to recognize for the government, we're going to be standing strong uh, in the defense of keeping them in school, in normal classrooms with extracurriculars. We've expanded the tutoring. Yes, $175 million, 49,000 kids a week are benefiting. Mental health is up another $10 million for the coming school year, 420% increase from where we started in 2017-18. All of this is designed to help support these kids and integrate them back in schools and rebuild their confidence uh, that they can do so, that they can be kids and they can learn again. But Minister, I want, to, I want to revisit this. Is the idea of having education workers and teachers as an essential service, is that on the table? Is that off the table? The mandate I have before me, the one focus I have and my only priority, is getting a deal with education workers and teachers in this province that is fair and that ultimately is really good for our kids. And I want a voluntary agreement. I've demonstrated as a minister in this province we can do so. We can get deals with, uh, with labor. And I hope and expect all of us to rise to the challenge, put kids first, uh, avoid disruption, and ensure children return to the classroom in a safe and positive manner. That is what I'm doing, Melanie. It's why I'm here. It's what I continue to do all summer. And I hope that our union partners will show up at the table and meet with us so that we can provide that stability that I think yourself and oh, so many parents in Ontario deserve. Uh, you mentioned a lot about extracurriculars. You know, in, in a perfect world, it'd be nice for everything to be back, to, for everyone to have a fair wage uh, in order to do uh, what they do best and what they want to do with their passions. Uh, you mentioned in your news conference yesterday that you hope, and you know, keeping in mind extracurriculars, uh, for a teacher to step up and do that, that is on a voluntary basis. You said you hope that educators will do the right thing. Uh, mm. And there's been a lot of criticism there because they want to do the right thing, but many feeling like the right thing is not happening at the table right now when it comes to what is needed for an educator to do the right thing. What can you sure. say about that with you know, teachers who are not paid 
properly with classroom sizes is still significantly bigger than many would hope. And also, we're still dealing with a pandemic. So there are a lot of uh, balls up in the air at this point. How can an educator or a teacher feel like they should be coaching track and field when they have to deal with all of this? Well, I mean, first off, we value educators in Ontario. We've got members in our caucus that are teachers and fam my own family. Uh, we pay educators the highest in this country, $91,000 on average. We are incentivizing educators to work and to do their best and to give it 100% every day. Uh, we've got a very generous pension and benefit program and sick leave and all this. So let's be clear. Our educators are well paid, especially relative to the rest of Canada. They lead in this respect. Now, we want to pay them well because we want to incentivize the best of them to stay. We want to retain that talent. But having said that, when it comes to September, after two years of disruption, for educators that went into this for children, our message on a moral basis is, look, what matters, uh, what matters more? Nothing matters more than the return to normal. And part of that is an expectation that the government is setting out on behalf of parents in this province who want sports, clubs, and extracurriculars to be restored. And that is exactly what we believe. We've increased the funding for schools for this September by $600 million. We announced a $300 million staffing fund to hire 3,000 more teachers, more EAs, more ECEs, more specialized math educators, specifically to help kids get back on track. And we've expanded tutoring programs through our school boards, mental health through our school boards. We've invested in public education. And now I'm asking all of us, all of us, to step up as best as we can to give these kids the fighting chance they deserve and give them back the normalcy that has been taken from them in Canada and around the world for these kids. And I believe educators will do the right thing. Minister, before we let you go, I'm curious if any educators or unions were involved in the process and consulting with this plan. Well, we've been listening over the past months. We've been consulting widely. Uh, I meet often with education, uh, with educators. I meet often with parents, with students, the Ontario Student Trustees Association, with so many partners who've informed us, including the medical community, the Children's Health Coalition, who I met with just a few weeks ago, who made it clear learning loss is a challenge. Mental health is critical. The return to normal is important. And obviously getting them back full time without disruption, that, that pattern and that consistency is going to be really important for a young student. So we are doing that with an emphasis on reading, writing and math, getting those uh, types of skill sets back on track for kids. We've invested accordingly and we built out a program that I think reflects the best interests of kids when it comes to the skill sets, the tutoring, the mental health. Uh, and the return to class. And that is our vision. It's what, what, what the mandate I have. And I'm very confident we can do that in partnership with everyone, including our educators, our parents, and the kids themselves. I, uh, as a parent, uh, am hopeful uh, that these negotiations are fair, um, are done in good faith, and that uh, everyone is able to be rewarded for the talents that they have and we can have somewhat of a normal school year. We will stay in touch. Education Minister Stephen Lecce, appreciate your time. Thank you.